So far in our videos, we did some old C-style operations on special function registers. In this video, I want to show you how we can make it more C++-ish. So let's start! Before we start, I want to remind you that you can download the source code for this video from my GitHub repository. Link to that in the description below. To start, we need to ask ourselves why do we even think about implementing classes for special function registers. Is C-style such a good solution? No, it is not, but it is not flawless neither. If you think about readability and reusability, then sure, it's not that bad. But if you think about safety and time effort needed to debug when something is not working as supposed, then things get a little bit worse. With C-style approach libraries like lowlayer from ST, we are directly accessing memory areas connected with special function registers and there is nothing except our sanity that prevents us from making some random undesired operations. On the other hand, with classes mirroring peripherals, we can protect ourselves by converting runtime errors into compile time errors. This can be done with carefully designed and implemented interfaces, providing peripherals configuration and control safety. Additionally, we also restrict direct memory access and potentially save some time wasted on debugging sessions, which is yet another benefit. To start off, let's write an empty class named GPIO. Now, if you want to modify GPIO registers from inside of this class, then we need to add them as its members. We make them private so that there is no access to these registers without use of public methods. From the GPIO register map in reference manual, we take names, sizes and offsets. For example, mode register named moder is 32 bits long. There is no address offset and so it means it goes first. As the size is 32 bits, we use 32 bits unsigned integer type. Next, we have an output type register called OTyper, which is also 32 bits long and its offset is 4. Do you see the relation between mode register 32 bit size and output type register offset 4? Yes, this means that in both our class and microcontroller, memory area OTyper is right after moder. Next, output speed register 32 bit size, address offset 8. And so on and so on. Ah, one more thing. We really, really don't want the compiler to optimize access to any of these members. Therefore, we give them the volatile type qualifier. Okay, I said something about interfaces providing configuration and control safety. How we do it? Well, simply by putting register possible values into enumeration classes and using them as parameters types. Here, let me explain. Let's take a function from ST library for STM32 dedicated for GPIO configuration, for example GPIO setpin mode. It has three parameters, two of which are of 32 bits unsigned integer type. Let's say we want to set pin PC13 of our black pill board to output mode to control our blue LED. Correct function call looks like this. But what about if we somehow make a mistake that we don't notice and make a call like this? Well, good luck finding this small typo, because guess what? Right now, instead of setting PC13 pin to output mode, we have a PC6 pin set to an alternate function. And except from that small misbehavior, everything else works just fine. Our code compiles and runs on our board, most likely without any sign that something is wrong. Now, we can avoid such bugs by using enumeration classes. For pin number, we define pin enum with a list of all available pins. For pin mode, we define another enumeration with all possible modes. Important thing, we need to keep the order of modes from the reference manual to give those enumerations proper values. Or we can just initialize them with bit values as they are in the manual. 
Perfect, we now have two enumerations needed to set our PC14 pin to output mode and be sure we don't make any mistake. If we mix arguments and put them in a the wrong order, compiler will immediately throw us a type safety error. Let's implement our custom setPin mode method with two parameters of type pin and mode. We won't modify values of these parameters, so as a good practice, let's additionally make them const. And now the most interesting stuff. To set the pin to a new mode, first we need to clear the old modder value and assign the new one as we did it in the video about GPIO outputs. But this time we need to consider one more important thing. We don't want to do this in two separate operations, as we don't want the pin to be set as an input for a short time between clearing modder bit values and setting them with new ones. Therefore, we need to do the whole operation with a single assignment operation. It's not hard as it looks like, we just have to merge two lines of code into one. And this time, instead of using bitwise end assignment and bitwise or assignment, we'll just use simple assignment. We need to take the value of mode register, clear pin bits with properly left shifted mask and set those bits with a new mode value. Sounds complicated, but let me break it down into smaller steps and explain what's really going on in here. Let's assume all pins are set to alternate functions. We set pin 13 and new mode is output. So first, we take the mode register value. Next, we need a bit mask with two bits set, which then we left shift pin number times multiplied by two. We do the times two multiplication because for each pin, there are two bits responsible for setting its mode. Now, we do a bitwise end operation with mode register value on the left side and bitwisely inverted mask on the right side. Result of this operation now goes on the left side of a bitwise OR operation, while on the right side we have a mode value left shifted by the pin number again multiplied by 2. This way we get a new mode register value that will switch the PC14 mode from alternate function to output without setting it to input mode for a short period of time. It will also not change any other pin's configuration. Now that we have our function ready, let's try this out with a correct and an incorrect call. A little bit more work, yes, I agree, but in return we get a type safety protection that can save us from wasting time debugging and searching for stupid human mistakes. And that's not the only advantage of peripherals encapsulation. Do you have an idea on any other advantages? Let me know in the comments. I said that we can protect ourselves from accidentally swapping function call arguments and now we can see the proof for that. The compiler threw us an error saying he cannot convert mode enumeration to pin enumeration and therefore he can't finish the compilation. In the second part I will explain how to make sure that our classes are properly placed at correct address of memory and that our methods are properly modifying values of peripherals registers. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button and if you didn't like it, please leave a comment with your feedback about what you didn't like and I will do my best to improve my future videos. In the meantime, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.